If James Harden decides to opt out of his player option with the Philadelphia 76ers and go to a different team, could the Sixers turn their focus to Fred Van Vliet to be Joel Embiid's co-star? We're going to talk about that, but also Nick Nurse. Welcome to Philadelphia. Got a taste of what it's like to be the head coach for this team during his first introductory press conference. We'll pass along some takeaways from that. Before we dive into it all, though, make sure you subscribe to the show. 163 people away from 10,000 subscribers here on 76ers Now. Let's do it for Mo Cheeks. And here's my proposal for all my fellow Sixers fans out there. If we get the 10,000 subs on this video alone next week, I will shotgun a beer right here on 76ers now in a retro Allen Iverson jersey. It's up to you to decide the fate. Hit that subscribe button for year-round Sixers coverage. And with that, let's start the show. All right, let's do it. Welcome into Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Let's begin with the latest around these Sixers free agency rumors, especially focusing in here on Fred Van Vliet. Could he replace James Harden if Harden decides to walk? It's an idea that I talked about the other day because I kind of drew the connection with Nick Nurse getting hired by Daryl Morey and Josh Harris. Could Fred Van Vliet then follow Nick Nurse if Harden were to leave. And now, some of those rumors are starting to pick up a little bit of steam. According to a report, the Sixers could turn their focus to Fred Van Vliet if Harden does decide to walk. Here's Brett Siegel's report on FLV. Harden owns a $35.64 million player option for the 2023-2024 season that many around the league are anticipating him opting out of, leaving the Sixers after just one full season and signing elsewhere as an unrestricted free agent. That's a very real possibility for Harden, which is why. Philadelphia has begun giving thought as to who could replace the former league MVP in the beard. According to league sources close to the organization, Raptors all-star guard Fred Van Vliet has emerged as a potential replacement for Harden this offseason. Now, this is interesting for a couple of reasons, because after Hearst, uh, after Nurse, excuse me, was hired by Philadelphia, Fred Van Vliet had tweeted out a prayers emoji congratulating Nurse on taking that new gig after he was let go by the Toronto Raptors. Then he went on with Shams Charania on the stream with Stadium and said a couple of interesting things about potentially following Nick Nurse and also his free agency plans about whether or not he was going to return to the Toronto Raptors. More thoughts on, on all this coming up around the corner, but first, I want to ask the people what you're all thinking here. If you could pick a player to be Joel Embiid's co-star, who would it be? Type F for Fred Van Vliet or J for James Harden. Sound off with what you think down below in the comment section right now. Let's compare both of these players here. There are pluses and minuses with both James Harden and Fred Van Vliet. With Harden, he's 33 years old, did lead the league in assists this past year with nearly 11 per night. He fills up the stat sheet with his points, assists, rebounds. He can shoot and score the basketball from all three levels, although his finishing ability around the rim, little bit concerning here over the last couple of years as he started to get a little bit older and lost some juice in those legs. He did shoot, though, 38.5% from three. That was the second best mark of his entire NBA career, which has been historic on the offensive end of the floor. And even though James Harden is 33 years old, you think about the player that he is, how he's respected around the NBA. I thought back to when Nick Nurse hopped on the J.J. Redick podcast. He said some of the players you specifically have to game plan against, one of them being James Harden. So he does still demand that type of attention across the NBA, and he could get about $50 million per year, which is interesting. Now, he did win games one and four for Philadelphia in that series against Boston, but he also has a lot of playoff, playoff flameouts as well. 
Why I kind of like Fred Van Vliet to a certain degree is that he's younger than James Harden. He's 27 years old. Last year, though, his shooting numbers a little bit concerning for me because they trended in a downward trajectory. From the field, he only shot 39%. A lot of those shots coming from downtown because his game is predicated on the three-point shot. But here's the problem. He only shot and connected on 34% of his three-pointers. He's a very good free-throw shooter at nearly 90%. That's up there with some of the best free throw shooters in the NBA. Can Fred Van Vliet win you two playoff games? I'm not sure he has the ability to shoulder the load and carry the squad like James Harden has been able to do. He is, though, the better defensive player, so I like that edge for Fred Van Vliet as compared to the beard. Here's the problem, though. While I don't think Van Vliet is going to get $50 $50 million potentially like James Harden could net and yield from the Houston Rockets. This free agency crop sucks at the guard position and at the wing position. So teams are going to be in the market for a player like Fred Van Vliet, and they could decide to overpay him a little bit. And could the Sixers overpay him to a certain degree if they get desperate knowing, well, shoot, we have to replace James Harden's production somewhere. And Fred Van Vliet He's the next best thing. You look at his numbers over the last four years. There's plenty of good. Honestly, I don't see a lot of bad with his game. He has missed some time as evidenced by the games played here. 54, 52, 65, 69. He does log a lot of minutes, though. As far as his playoff success, first couple of years in the playoffs, he wasn't great. The 2019 year when the Raptors beat the Sixers in that second round, he was very good. The year after that, he was solid, not anything special. But his regular season numbers, you get a glimpse of what he's capable of. If he's hovering in the upper 30s as far as the percentile from deep, that's great. If he's down toward 34%, that's a little bit of a problem. But playing alongside Embiid as well as Tyrese Maxey, could he get more open looks and then in turn the shooting numbers go up? For Harden, production is never really an issue outside of when the pressure cooker is popping, like in Game 7 against Boston or in Game 6 when he kind of went missing. You see here with the graphic that the numbers in the playoffs for Harden during his time in Philadelphia, did go down in the playoffs, both from the field and then the three-point numbers from the regular season did go down. But it is very difficult to replace 21 points per game and pretty much a guy who's going to tally close to a triple-double night in, night out for Harden, even though he does have some of the negative aspects to his game and sometimes he's a little bit flaky. Fred Van Vliet on Nick Nurse did say this as well, that bond that we have, that's a lifelong thing. So the things that I was talking about a little bit earlier and what I alluded to with Van Vliet talking about Nick Nurse, they do seem to have a very good relationship so that pairing would make sense of Van Vliet coming to Philadelphia to follow his former head coach. Speaking of his former head coach and the Sixers' new head coach in replacing Doc Rivers, Nick Nurse did have his introductory press conference today. Just want to pass along a couple of notable tidbits from what he had to say to the media, and I can guarantee you this. He's dealing with media pressure that's more than anything that he's come to know with the Toronto Raptors. Philadelphia's media market is completely different, and I absolutely love it. The pressure is on, and you got to perform. Otherwise, you're going to get called out by the fans as well as the media as well. So Nick Nurse did say, quote, he would be very happy if James Harden did return to Philadelphia. On Harden coming back, Nick Nurse was asked, what did you try to sell Harden on? And he said, winning. Now, I didn't get an overwhelmingly resounding yes, we really want James Harden back because Nurse did say, you know what, James has a decision to make. He didn't say definitively, we need him back, we want him back, we're going to make it happen. I did think that was a little bit interesting. He might know in the back of his mind, Fred Van Vliet is an option there. Nurse's mission for this team specifically, is to play more team basketball. That's something that he really wants to instill. And sometimes this offense gets way too stagnant. Sometimes the shot clock bleeds until a couple of seconds when James Harden is going to have to either give it up, he's going to have to throw up a step back, or Joel Embiid is going to have to take some ill-advised shot because sometimes the offense is centered way too much around both of them kind of killing the basketball. So playing more team ball, that's great. Please just trade Tobias Harris. He also said that he's going to go the load management route with Embiid. I thought this was hilarious that when he was hired, everybody was saying he loves to run his starters into the ground. And I'm like, this isn't Tom Thibodeau, right? He's not going to play his starters 40 minutes per night. Why is that? And especially with Joel Embiid. 
he coached Kawhi Leonard back in 2018-2019 when Kawhi missed a bunch of games. He only played somewhere around 50 regular season games, and the Raptors were really good without Kawhi that year. So to go load management with Embiid is the smart play. Nick Nurse, in my opinion, is a smart guy. You want him fresh and right for the playoffs, and that's going to be the approach for Nurse. He's not going to run the starters into the ground. He did stress the development of players. I also thought that this was something interesting that some people were talking about, that he didn't do a good job of this while with the Toronto Raptors. I totally disagree. Masai Ujiri, one of the best executives in the sport at identifying talent, grooming them, developing developing them in this player development program for Toronto. Nick Nurse was a part of that as an assistant and as a head coach. You look at the growth that we've seen from Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi. A guy like Kem Birch even looked good for a little while. So I do think Scotty Barnes, another player who won Rookie of the Year under Nurse's watch. So he has been able to develop players. And what else I like before we hop on out of here, the Raptors as an organization prior to Nurse with Dwayne Casey always fell short in the playoffs. The Sixers with Doc Rivers, and really for a long time since 2001, as they haven't escaped the second round since then, have come up short in the playoffs. And now they bring in Nick Nurse, who got the Raptors over the hump. Can he do the same thing with the Sixers? It's going to come down to the players and Joel Embiid being better in some of these massive, massive moments. But... Nick Nurse can also offer them a coaching advantage as well. So grade the hiring of Nick Nurse before we hop on out of here. 1 to 100. 1, you hate it. 100, you love it. I'm in the 90s. I wanted him all the way. He was my number one target because I knew that Jay Wright was not going to join this team. Also, make sure you subscribe to the show. 10,000 subscribers. Can we get there with this video? Let's hope so. If we do, power of the people. Shotgun and a beer and an AI jersey next week.